Hello everybody and welcome to Fever A Beyond Fever Sports for today's preview as the Springboks take on Wales tomorrow in Bloemfontein, the second test of a three match test series. The Springboks looking to try and seal the series victory whilst Wales are playing to keep themselves within the series and have been given a very big opportunity to do so with Jacques Nielbaugh having made 14 changes to the starting lineup for the box tomorrow um, and 90 changes in total to the match day 23. So just four players um, from last weekend do make the Springbok team for this weekend. They are Damien Vincent, Eben Etzebeth, Malcolm Marks, and Vincent Koch. Apart from that, 19 different players, six players on debut. So it's a very inexperienced Springbok side. Wales, however, very much opting to go with consistency. And you, you, can, you can understand why. The fact that they played so well last weekend and they pushed the Springboks to, to, you know, right to the end. You know, I think they'll be thinking that they can get the job done this weekend against a Springbok side which is eager to, to prove themselves, but I think if they were to fall behind, for example, it kind of comes down to do they have the experience, do they have the, the class to be able to calm themselves down, be able to get the job done. And I think it's the experience on the Welsh side which could get them over the line this weekend. Before we look at the two teams, please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. In terms of how they will line up, though, this is how the Spring Box will line up. So, Ibn Etzebeth is the only player who has been retained in the starting 15. Um, which will be captained by Andre Pollard, who makes his return to the Bach Colors. So in, in front row, we've got Thomas Toy at a loose head, played a tight head for the entire sort of URC when he captained the Sharks, so it'll be very interesting to see how he goes at a loose head. Uh, Joseph Dwayne will get an opportunity to try and impress somebody who is, I wouldn't say under pressure for his position because of his performances, but rather somebody like Johan Krabala, who is putting in massive performances week in, week out, and, and definitely sort of putting himself in the mix and I think that Joe Strebel will need to have a big showing tomorrow just to say that he deserves to be there and he definitely is the third choice uh, hooker and then Trevor Nyakane who has been switching from tight head to loose head uh, for the last sort of 18 months a lot for the spring box and has been doing it with with absolutely you no know, issue whatsoever We'll start a tight head tomorrow, which is more sort of where he plays regularly these days um, The lock combination Evan Etzebeth is joined by Marvin Ori who is a very good line out worker uh, very much picked for his line on work. Somebody who's had a very quiet but very good season for Stormers, actually. I think he's someone who is not particularly flashy, but does a lot of the basics pretty well. He's a very decent defender. Um, you know, he's a reasonable ball carrier, but he's also managed to cut out a lot of the disciplinary issues which were sort of holding him back in the past. Uh, his main job tomorrow will be to ensure that that line out does operate very, very well. It's a brand new loose trio. Marcel could see it back in a Springbok jersey for the first time in about four years, I think it is, or three years. Um, and he'll be earning his cap number 31 after a stormy season capturing the Bulls. He'll be next to former World Player of the Year, Pierre Steph Toy, who also makes a return to the Springbok jersey, whilst Evan Ruiz, the URC Player of the Season, is on debut in the number 8 jersey. Uh, uh, Jaden Hendrickson will get a second cap as he starts next to Andre Pollard, somebody who's very much a playmaking scrum half and I think has all the tools to become a, a world beater, but just needs to start learning, you know, to how to put it all to the to best sort of effect and I think that he's someone who's not necessarily playing the best rugby of his life at the moment but has incredible amounts of potential and I think the Springbok management very much see that if we can get him playing at the, at the level they want he could very much be a sort of scrum off in the mold of sort of Farida Pura. Uh, he's next to Andre Pollard and we need to start seeing the general that is Pollard you know we need to start seeing a very fluid goal kicker we need to start seeing somebody who takes charge and somebody who really sort of marshals that back line because we Probably saw one of his weaker seasons in a Springbok jersey last year, and he hasn't exactly gone to Montpellier and had a lot of game time um, and, and, and sort of played his way into form. So he's somebody who the Springboks are desperate to try and come off because at the moment there are massive question marks over the number 10 jersey. Uh, Andre Esterhazen is back in the box setup after being, you know, I think even my Dan big, Bigger's words yesterday, um, sort of the de facto premiership player of the season. A lot of people felt he was quite, he was actually robbed of the award because he had played so well for Harlequins throughout the entire season. Uh, he is joined by Jesse Creel, who's back in the number 13 jersey for the first time in quite a while. And somebody who was dislodged by Lacanya Amon has a bit, had a very difficult time trying to get back into that jersey. He will need a big performance just to remind everybody what he is about. He played pretty well last year on the wing when he did have to get called up. And I think that he did sort of, you know, remind people that he was a key part of the Springboks um, for quite a while. I mean, he's, he's, he's got 50 caps for the box. So he's not like he's somebody who's new to the setup, but somebody who's sort of a, almost fallen a bit to the wayside. So a nice opportunity for him to refresh everybody's memories in terms of the class and the pedigree he does possess. And then it's a brand new back three, Apele Fassi in the number 11, Kurt Lawrence on debut in the 14, and then Warren Halant at full back. There are three full backs really uh, playing there in that back three. So very interesting to see how they go 
Um, and I think that somebody like Warwick Halan, for example, who's very much going to start pushing Villarreal, I believe, for that number 15 jersey. Um, hopefully, we'll have a very good game. But uh, I played a fast, Kurt Lawrence uh, uh, are very exciting players, very much X Factor type players. And I think I played a fast right now. For me, I feel a lot more comfortable with him on the wing than if you were to be playing a fullback. And I think Orange, uh, you know, is very much in the Colby mold and the Hero Apron mold, and more than just the sort of the scrum cap look. Somebody who's a little bit smaller, but, you know, got a lethal sidestep, reads the game very well, um, has very impressive acceleration, got a very good skill set from the sort of uh, Sevens, a uh, bit of a Sevens background there as well, being involved with the Blitz box. Off the bench, Malcolm Marks in Tuku in Tungu on debut in the 17 jersey, as well as Vincent Koch. It's a very good two players for the likes of um, Gunu to come on and, and make his debut because he's someone who I was quite surprised to be in the, in the setup and even more surprised that he is getting a debut. Uh, a very exciting ball carrier It's whether he can do the scrummaging work. Can he do the sort of the basics that a prop has to do in order to try and sort of lock that jersey down and become the next beast in Tauri a lot of people are touting him as. He very much says he wants to create his own legacy, he wants to do his own thing, doesn't want to have those comparisons which you can completely understand. Uh, then Ruan Nokia, another player on debut, is joined with the likes of Renan Alstadt and Dion Free, and they've got a big opportunity to try and sort of put themselves within the, the Rugby World Cup 2023 framework, because I think at the moment, you know, very, there, there, there are so many loose forwards vying for very few positions on a plane to France next year, and these three are players, or these two are more than Alstadt and Free, are two players who are kind of on the fringes. Dion Free's played himself into the box setup. Renan Alstadt's been there for a while, and the box management rate him, but a lot of the Springbok fans and general public haven't seen enough of him to really know what he's all about so he'll get an opportunity to show him tomorrow grant williams a live wire scrum half and will also make his debut if he comes off the bench he is joined by Willem sir in uh the two backline players in what is a 6-2 split and two players you can inject a lot of pace in fact i think a lot of these players you know dion free um grant williams and Willem sir will help add a lot of pace to the game for me i think i, I think i really enjoy the fact that you know have dion free and, and malcolm marks on the parkers fetches in the last stages of the game as well should make the breakdown work very difficult for, for Wales in the in the last 20 minutes. It's a side with very little experience, but there's, there's a lot of players on form here. As I said, we're talking about URC player of the season. We're talking about one of the best players in the Premiership. You know, we're talking about players like um, Kurt Lawrence, who's been in, in prolific form for football. You know, we're looking at players like, um, you know, Apple Fass, who's been playing really good rugby. Uh, Marcel Kutsia, who's been, he looks look at, very close to his best. So there are a lot of players here who, who are, don't have a lot of Springbok experience but are playing the best rugby in their career. And it's about whether they can translate that into a Springbok jersey and whether they can then go on to beat this Welsh side. Just the one change. And it is Alex Cuthbert who comes in in the number 11 jersey. Uh, a bit of a different player too to Josh Adams. Um, but the big thing as we should look at this team, is it's a very big back three. And I think that's going to be quite an interesting to sort of see how the kicking game goes. And Dan Bigger to speak about the importance of the kicking game. Um, but if we look at this at this Welsh side, it's a it's a Welsh side as I said that 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 w went very close last week to beating the Springboks, and they'll they'll want to try and go out and give it another show. You know, I think they, they'll be they'll be even if they can get over the line here, um, and I think that they very much could if they if they were to put in a good performance again. Um, so Gareth Thomas, Ryan, Elias, and Dylan Lewis will pack down in, in in the front row. Dylan Lewis will be hoping that he's going to play another eight or nine minutes after what happened to Thomas Francis last weekend. But I thought Gareth Thomas were pretty bright in terms of his ball carrying abilities. Uh, will Rodens, Adam Beard, the lock combination. I thought Will Rodens probably had his best play, um, game in a Welsh jersey last weekend. Looked really, really good. Um, very much sort of won the physical battle when he when he did it. Um, sort of carry the ball in hand. Was very good at line up time. Adam Beard was probably a little bit quieter. Um, they would like to see more from him. Um, and then you've got Dan Lydiat, uh, Tommy Rafael, and Salah Profeltau. And I thought Rafael on debut was as good as any debutant could be, really. Um, was very good over the ball. I thought that he looked very at home at the level. And then something like Valtau, if he gets if he gets going tomorrow, it's going to be a very very long day for the box. Uh, Kieran Hardy in the back of what I thought was a very impressive um, box kicking performance. He, I thought he managed the game very well. Partners as captain Dan Bigger is going to have to really front up physically this weekend because he will have the likes of Evan Ruiz, Marcel Kutsia, Andre Esterhaz, and Andre Pollard all running down his channel. So he's in for a very big defensive game. The back three will be Alex Cuthbert, Louis Rees Zammert on the back of his brace last weekend, and Liam Williams. So it's three players who are very, very different back threes because I think the, the Bok back three is not a particularly big back three. Kurt Lawrence is not that big. Uh, Apple Fassi is not the shortest person, but not exactly, um, you know, sitting at 110, 115 kgs. You've got Liam Williams, you know, Rees Zammert, and, and uh, Alex Cuthbert who are quite, they're just bigger at the end of the day. They are bigger than the Bok back three. 
and I think it'll be quite interesting to sort of see what that sort of how that sort of plays out. You know, in terms of the aerial battle, you've got Dries Salmon, who's still 1.91. Um, you know, not a 90 kgs winger. Liam Williams, probably, arguably the best fullback in the world in terms of, of his aerial ability. Um, Alex Cuthbert, who is also no, no slouch. Um, but I think that for Wales, they'll be looking for a much bigger game from the likes of Nick Tompkins and George North. Obviously, George North is his first game back after a long time for Wales. But I think that, you know, by his own admission, was, was, was a bit of a passenger last weekend. He didn't get a lot of opportunity to really sort of make his mark. Um, and I think that he'll want to sort of get his hands more on the ball this weekend. And look, it's a very physical centre pairing in the likes of for the Springboks for, for in the likes of Jesse Creel and Andre Estes. And so I think Nick, Nick Com Com Tompkins and George North, that could be a very interesting battle in terms of the physical battle between those centre pairings. Um, off the bench, Dewey Lake, Wynn Jones, and then Sam Wainwright comes in. So he's on debut. Um, and a big match uh, up ahead for him against um, Inglou. And then uh, Wynn Jones back from injury does make it back for this weekend and he'll be a massive boost for the Welsh pack. Adam Wynn Jones, Josh Navidi, plenty of experience coming in there. Josh Navidi, I'm a big fan of his, and I think he'll add a lot towards the end of the game. And then Thomas Williams, uh, Gareth Anscombe, and then Josh Adams are the other three in a traditional 5-3 sort of split on the bench. Uh, let me know what you think the score is going to be down in the comments below. Please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steven, and I'll chat to you soon.